Well, we are rolling on here with the NIT, and the NIT has pretty much outshined the BCS playoffs in terms of excitement. First two games decided by the final play and decided by three points or fewer, and now we roll on with number three versus number six in the Gildan New Mexico Bowl. Virginia versus Louisville, ACC versus the Big East. For Louisville, this is their very first appearance in any postseason tournament. They've never been to the BCS playoffs before. On the other side of it, for the Virginia Cavaliers, they've been to the BCS playoffs one other time. They were eliminated in the first round, but both teams are here and part of the first ever NIT. And if this game is any indication of what our first two NIT games have been like, we see the great flyover by our armed forces. We are in for what should be a treat in this game. Who is going to be our player to watch for? Let's see, Larry Reynolds for the Virginia Cavaliers. Or excuse me, Leroy Reynolds. That's the linebacker from Norfolk, Virginia. He is the junior. Some numbers on this guy. Anywhere from 12 to 8 to 9 tackles a game. Hasn't had a sack this year. No forced fumbles, no interceptions, but in terms of a tackling machine, I mean, 9, 10, 11 tackles almost a game. Keep your eye on that guy, and we're underway with the NIT. Game number three in the National Invite Tournament. And, of course, taking a page from college basketball when we talk about Elite Eight, NIT, Final Four, but why not? They're the ones that have it right. Why not take from the best? Winner of this game will move on to the Ticket City Bowl to do battle with the Ohio Bobcats, and then the winner of that game will move on to Hawaii for the NIT Championship, so... Who will move on from New Mexico over to Texas for the Ticket City Bowl with Ohio? We're going to do an option play. Quarterback will keep it himself, and that will be enough for a first down. That is Michael Rocco, the star for this Virginia Cavs team. 2,300 yards passing, 11 touchdowns, but also 11 interceptions for Rocco. He's also run the ball 38 times this year for 23 yards and two touchdowns on the ground. It'll bring up a fresh set of downs for Virginia, first down and 10. Ball is at the 38 yard line. Rocco will hand it off to his running back and he's gonna lose a yard. Perry Jones on the handoff. And of course they like to alternate between Perry Jones, Kevin, or no, that's, uh, is that them or is that Louisville I'm thinking of? That's Louisville I'm thinking. Don't, just ignore what I just said. They're going to auction it again, and they can't even get the ball out to Perry Jones. He's going to be tackled back there by Smith, the safety, Hakeem Smith. How about that? The safety able to get back there and, and force the tackle on the play. Third down and 15 for Virginia. And we have movement. I think it's going to be an offsides. Yes, point for me. It is an offside. Roy Fillion. Louisville in the past, they've been known for some of their wilder uniforms with the spikes and the stripes. They've come, they went kind of classic this year with their new look. Rocco pressured on the outside. He was able to get it away. Didn't even see the man coming. So he was able to keep his composure. And he was able to get it out there to his wide receiver. And that was Matt Schneider for the first down. Matt Schneider, 19 receptions on the year, 220 yards. Has yet to get a touchdown this year. The Cavs at eight and four on the year, going up against seven and five, Louisville. Rocco heads back. Incomplete, should have been intercepted. I don't know how it wasn't intercepted. Second down and 10. Rocco into Louisville territory, and that is completed. Found Perry Jones on the reception. That's the running back. So it'll be third down and six here at the Gildan New Mexico Bowl. 
Rocco has so much time. Floats it out there. Gets it to his receiver. But that's going to be short of the first down. I believe he might have dropped it. as what they're going to call. So that'll be a punt situation. Here comes the, the kick. It was kind of a wobbly punt. It's going to roll out of bounds at the 10. But good enough, right? I mean, hit him inside the 10. Coach can't argue with that. And opening play. And Bridgewater was able to get it out there to wide receiver Harris. They run it on second down and two, and it's not going to be enough. So, third and one. What do the cards pull out here? Option out. Is that the wild cardinal offense? Just shy. They love to do what I like, the, what they call, actually, and I really like it. They have the wild cat and all that. They actually call it the wild card the wild card offense. They tried it there. It didn't work out. And that's a three and out for Louisville. And they're going to have to punt it back to Virginia. So defense holding strong on our opening drives. And now, but for the Virginia Cavaliers, they've really been winning the field position fight. And they're going to get the ball close to midfield. Play action fake. Rocco does it beautifully. Heaves the ball deep down the field. Incomplete. Awesome defense by Conley. There's a inside handoff for, for uh, Jones. And he gets six yards, Perry Jones. Third down and four. Rocco will be forced to throw it. He has his open man. First down and more for Virginia. And speaking of Virginia, they their other close to state brethren, West Virginia. They're playing right now against uh, Wisconsin on ESPN2. We've got BYU and Oregon on ESPN. And then these guys going at it on the U, ESPNU, between Virginia and Louisville. That's Perry, first down for him. Down to the 15 yard line and inside the red zone, juking and jiving, offensive lineman picking up blocks and he kinda just did the rest with his skills on the ground. Virginia, their offense has been moving the ball pretty well here in the first quarter. Rocco, end zone. Knocked away, incomplete, deflected by big number 91 on the Louisville Cardinals. That's William Savory. William Savoy. Here comes Virginia. That's a touchdown for the Cavaliers. Marched right through by Perry Jones. That's going to be a touchdown, and that is Jones's on the ground touchdown number six on the year. Extra point is knocked through, and the Cavaliers, they will maintain the lead. Robert Randall put it through for the extra point. So here come the Cardinals trying to answer. That's a nice start for the offense on the kick return. Or, or, well, it helps out the offense, the special teams, setting them out there with the great kick out return. So they can about the 35, and I believe that was Victor Anderson either running it back or 
the DB. Either one, but I assume that was Anderson. Here comes Anderson, and he's going to be thrown down. I mean, thrown down by Taufa Falero. And he didn't, he didn't like the treatment there. We got some arguing. Going to be stopped for a loss of two yards. The Louisville offense having a hard time getting their game going, and that was Bridgewater. He tried to try to run it. Louisville likes to hit, use kind of the three-headed monster: Dominique Brown, Victor Anderson, and Jeremy Wright in terms of running. Now Bridgewater forced to throw it on third and fourteen, going to the far side, threw it in triple double coverage. And he's lucky that one wasn't picked off or incomplete on a fourth down and fourteen. That punt return, we are going to head to the end of the first quarter in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It is the New Mexico Bowl between the Louisville Cardinals and the Virginia Cavaliers. The Gildan New Mexico Bowl from Albuquerque as part of the NIT. We are at University Stadium, the campus of New Mexico. The Lobos. But it's up to this Virginia offense now. And they're going to look at this formation as they give it. That's a fumble on the play. And Virginia able to get it back. Louisville forcing fumbles. And it was Bird who ran it. So second down and eight. They can't have errors like that if they want to try to. Keep the lead going. Pitches it out to the running back. There's Perry. Perry breaking tackles and just shy of the 40-yard line. How well has Perry run the ball today? The hurdle, the stiff arm, finally tackled from behind. Yes, indeed. Fresh set of downs for Virginia. Play action at the Perry this time, trying to catch Louisville off guard. They do. They have a wide open receiver down to the 10, breaking tackles to the 6-yard line. And Rocco is able to connect with Phillips, Cotter Phillips, for the first. First and goal. Quarterback under center. Perry's going to wait for the block. End zone. Touchdown, Virginia. The Cavaliers will take a 13-point lead. Rocco places it perfectly to his intended wide receiver. And that was Paul Friedman. How about the Cavs taking the lead and they have their eyes dead set on the Bobcats. That's Friedman's first touchdown of the football game or of the uh, year. Fourteen to zero. Louisville offense. They were held to a couple of three and outs and Virginia, they've capitalized. They had to punt once, but other than that they've They've driven on these Cardinals and put many of points up on the scoreboard. Incomplete. He ran before he caught the ball. Did Josh Bellamy. And that fell right to the turf. Incomplete. That would have been a touchdown if Bellamy had caught it before he tried to run it. Bridgewater will get that one completed. Out to wide receiver Andrel Smith. Third down and three now for the Cardinals, desperately looking for a first down. Bridgewater has that first down. That was Smith again, was it? Or 
was that the man that that indeed that was the man that had dropped it earlier on the beginning of the drive. They decided to go back to him for Bellamy. And that's going to be enough for Louisville first down. The first down and 10 at the 42-yard line for the Cardinals. And on the handoff, and that's going to be a one-yard pickup for the running back for Anderson. The senior from Louisville, Kentucky, so right here in his hometown, getting to go to his hometown college. And that's going to be 15 yards the other way, and the Cardinals know it. Eagle Eye, Edward Hockley Jr. catches the face mask on Jake Schneider, and that's going to help out the Cardinals in a big way as they're able to move down into Virginia territory, trying to get their first points of the ball game up on the board. And that's nabbed past the 30 for a first down, and that was Bellamy. So going back to Bellamy, letting him redeem himself on this drive is the quarterback Bridgewater giving Bellamy another opportunity. So it'll be first down and 10. And now Louisville, after stalling out early, they're moving, and they got five wide on this setup. Bridgewater's going to run it. He has an opening. First down, they're going to give it to him. They are not. It's going to be second in inches. Again, Eagle Eye, Edward Hockley Jr. is the son of the great NFL Ed Ed, NFL referee Ed Hockley. Brings up second down in inches. I'm not so sure they don't just give it to Anderson. Let him get the first, but they're going to go five wide once again. No, Bridgewater's going to quarterback keeper it. And there he's not going to get it. So you essentially back him up an additional four or five yards to take the snap out of shotgun. Bridgewater tries to run, and he gets stopped short. And now you line up in shotgun again, third and inches. This time they do give it to Anderson, and Anderson's not going to get it. I think they knew that one was coming all the way, so settle for a field goal are the Cardinals. It's going to be a field goal about 30 yards for Chris Philpott. Only missed two field goals from this distance all year. It'll be about a 30, 30 plus yarder, 35 yarder. Louisville is content to let the clock wind down before they even attempt this field goal, trying to give that the high-powered Virginia offense as little as time as possible. And they are going to put it through. We have yet to see a shutout in the Bowl Championship Series up to this point. We are not going to see one here as the Cardinals find three on the board. They still trail the Cavaliers by 11 points. Virginia with all three timeouts. See if they want to drive and increase this lead a little bit. That's exactly what they're going to do. Rocco looking for it all. One heave to the end zone. Touchdown, Virginia Cavaliers. They let the time wind all the way down. They kicked the field goal, and it didn't matter because it took one heave from Rocco to Tim Smith. And that is a touchdown for Virginia. Tim Smith's longest of the year, 60 yards. He just broke it on that play. Touchdown number four for Smith. And the Cavaliers will increase their lead over the Cardinals. How about that throw, that heave from the quarterback? Five wide for Louisville. Next is his man to the 30. And they're going to use their first timeout. So it'll be second down and six from the 30-yard line. Lined up in shotgun. Bridgewater's going to run it. 
juking and jiving. First down. And it's going to be enough to, well, they're going to call a timeout. They're just going to take their time that they can. Five wide once again. Completed pass. First down, Cardinals. Hurry up offense. They're going to save that last timeout. The chains are moving, so the clock will stop. Bridgewater has it. He's going to run it. This is the, the National Invite Tournament as part of the Bowl Championship Series here on YouTube and Facebook. And the Cardinals are trying to make a rally before the half. Bridgewater pressured, and he's going to go down. Quarterback sack. They're going to save that last timeout. Third down and 13, trying to bring everybody back under 20 seconds to go. And now they're going to send somebody in motion. Here comes the snap. He's going to run it, and down he goes. And now Virginia will use their timeout. So an unsuccessful drive for the Cardinals. And now... Will there be time left? One second left on the clock for Virginia to make a heave towards the end zone. Let's see what Rocco does. You would think that's why they called the timeout. Instead, they just let Perry run it. I don't know why you call a timeout then in that situation if you're just going to run it. But nonetheless, you look at Perry Jones having a great day. And that's going to be the end of our first half. It's Virginia 21, Louisville 3. And we're going to send it up to the ESPN U crew up in the booth. Let them uh, bounce some numbers off of you. And we'll be back after the break. Welcome back to Albuquerque, New Mexico here at University Stadium. It's the Gildan New Mexico Bowl, part of the NIT between Mike London and his Virginia Cavaliers and Charlie Strong, Louisville Cardinal. The winner of this game will meet Ohio at the Cotton Bowl in the Ticket City Bowl. And you're taking a look at what the Cavaliers did in the first half, offensive explosions, and you can't leave out the defense. You talk about how good the offense did. You got to credit the defense. And now it's up to the Cardinals. At this point, it's their game. They got to try to either fight their way back into it or figure something out right now because Virginia's having their way. And here comes Bridgewater. He's been trying to do that a couple of times, run the ball. And he's able to get nine yards on the run. Scramble these quarterbacks and they get their opportunity. They love to run. Second and one, maybe they'll give it to Anderson, see if they can't just pick up the first. Every time I say that, they go to a five wide. Maybe it'll be the quarterback sneak. No, it's not. First down. That's maybe what Virginia was thinking, and Louisville was able to catch him off guard by going with the five wide. And, and Bridgewater is able to find his wide receiver, Rogers, Eli Rogers, for the first. He's a freshman from Miami. First down at the 41-yard line for the Cardinals. Bridgewater lines up in the gun. He will take it. He will be pressured. He will find an open receiver. Well covered, but an even better throw from Bridgewater to find his man to get the first down, and that was Harris. And I mean, Harris was just well covered by Mosley, and Bridgewater was still able to spring or spring the spring the throw get it in there thread the needle so to speak and there's another thread the needle kind of pass for a cardinal first down single coverage and just gets it down there to smith smith able to dodge past nicholson pick up the first down Lined up in perhaps the wild card formation. Everyone breaking free. There's the throw incomplete. 
It's been a relatively clean game up to this point, and no turnovers. We had one fumble that was picked back up by Virginia. Bridgewater with an empty back again. Has the man for a eight yard gain. Boom. Can't get more accurate than that. And that was Rogers again on the reception. Eli Rogers. Third down and one. Do we get Anderson involved in the game? Perry Jones, in terms of running on Virginia's side, has been doing really well. Play action. Bridgewater has an opening. Here he goes. Looking for the end zone. Can't get there, but it is going to be enough for a Cardinal first down the play action. You see him take off. And that's going to be a Cardinal first down. It'll be first and goal. Louisville is excited. They've done a great job on this drive of just driving down the field. Getting their way towards the end zone. Bridgewater, he's going to take off again. Touchdown. No. The referee crew says he was down. Second and goal at the inch line. Five wide. Watch Bridgewater. He's going to take it, I bet you. He's going to take it. No, he's not. He's going to throw it. End zone incomplete. Third and goal for the Cardinals. The line is being stacked right now. Look at Virginia. They're going to bring the blitz. And they're going to go around the pile. They stack the line. Virginia, they go wild card formation. End around sweep. And that is a Louisville touchdown. What great play calling on that play by Charlie Strong. Extra point is up. And extra point is good. That was Jeremy Wright, by the way, the running back that... Not that ran that one in. The wild card formation. Virginia says, we're going to stack it. We're going to blitz you. We go five wide empty backfield. Bring a, bring a running back around the pile. Inside handoff, and that's a Cardinals touchdown. The pressure falls back into the Cavaliers' hands. Go down the field and increase your lead. If not, you give the momentum. And the football right back to the Cardinals. And they get a chance to score and cut the lead down even more. That's exactly what we're talking about. You do plays like that. A little too much trickery. You're going to end up costing your own team. The Cavaliers on the sideline are wondering what kind of play was that that we were trying to run. He's second down in 13. That was Bird. He was the one that fumbled it earlier in the game. It was recovered by his one of his offensive players. Inside hand out to Perry Jones, and Jones will get two yards and nothing more. Third and 11, Virginia needs to keep the pressure on Louisville. Out of gun for Rocco. He's been great throwing it. That's a, is that a fumble? Yes, it is. And it's going to be recovered by the offensive line. Was his arm moving forward or not? No, that was a clean fumble, I believe. Nonetheless, doesn't matter because uh, Virginia got it back, so they're punting it anyway. Momentum is such a strange thing, but it works in crazy ways in sports. Without a doubt. And you're seeing it firsthand. If Louisville can keep the momentum, keep the pressure going, and score, it'll be a four point football game. And heck, if they decide to go for it, it might be a three point game. Lined up in the pistol. They give it to Anderson, and his game hasn't been able to get going here today. Second and 12. Maybe let Bridgewater continue to run it. We'll continue to throw it. Bridgewater to Anderson. Seven yard pickup. 
Third down and six. And this is why the Cardinals are so dangerous. Bridgewater, you can either throw it, you can run it. I mean, anything is so effective right now for this team. He's going to throw it. He's pressured. He's able to get it away. Breaking tackles. First down, Louisville. First down, Cardinals. Teddy Bridgewater up over 120 yards throwing. Cardinals go five wide once again. They love this setup. Bridgewater, look at the blocks. That's a seven-yard completion. And you see Cavalier head coach Mike London wondering what's going on. We're struggling all of a sudden. Eli Rogers uh, grabbed that last ball. Second and three. Good blocking. Bridgewater steps up, hits his man right in the hands. That was Bellamy, Josh Bellamy from St. Petersburg, Florida. Probably wishes he could have gone to the Beef O'Brady's Bowl, but nonetheless, they're here in the NIT and they're trying to make a rally. The winner gets the Ohio Bobcats at the Cotton Bowl Stadium in the Ticket City Bowl. Bridgewater, end zone, touchdown Louisville Cardinals. Connecting with Smith, Bridgewater to Onrell Smith. The junior from Miami, and that's a touchdown. And we're down to a four, a five point game. Two point conversion pending, we'll see. There's still a lot of time to maybe go for two. They are just going to go for one. Kick is good, so that'll make it a four-point game. I'm telling you, momentum, it's a crazy thing in sports. These fans traveled well from both Virginia and Louisville, making the cross-country trip here. Almost kind of vacationing with their teams. Just like basketball does, just like baseball does for their postseason in college athletics. All these games, neutral sites. First down and 10. Play action fake. Rocco, wide open, wide receiver. Here comes West Virginia, and they're going to burn the Cardinals. Touchdown for Schneider. And the West, Vir or the Virginia, sorry. Sorry, Virginia fans. The Virginia Cavaliers. Matt Schneider, the wideout, with the score. First touchdown of the year for Schneider. And taking momentum back, but at the same time scoring a little too quickly. That sends Louisville back out there. Your defense hasn't had a lot of time to rest. And that might let your defense give up an easy score to the Cardinals. We'll see. We will see. Virginia will increase the lead 28-17. Makes it an 11-point game once again. Cardinals desperately trying to fight their way back into this. Both teams have been performing really well. Has not been a sloppy game by any means. No turnovers. Uh, just been clean, good football all the way down. Virginia's just made a couple more plays than Louisville has. We are lined up in the gun. Bridgewater over the middle. For a couple of yards there, that's Harris. We're coming into the fourth quarter. This is it. The game is on the line. The NIT, the two games previous to this, came down to one final play. Will the Cardinals make it interesting? How many exciting games can we have in the NIT? Well, we're just a couple of minutes from finding out. We're down to one final quarter. Out of shotgun. Anderson takes it, and Anderson goes down. Victor Anderson having a terrible day. Third down and eight. Bridgewater. Had a wide open wide receiver and he overthrew him incomplete. And bless his heart, he's got to be the sickest man in America after overthrowing a wide open wide receiver. The Cavaliers 
can really put the dagger in the stone on this drive if Rocco and his offense can put another touchdown on the board. Let's see what happens. 435 remaining in the game. Hand off to Perry Jones. Perry Jones is making Anderson look really bad. Anderson has had an awful day. Perry Jones, 73 rushing yards. This is now outstanding. Second down and two. They give it to Jones one more time, but Jones can't break through there. Third down and two. And off to Jones, first down. That's what the Cavs are going to just do at this point. Drain the clock out and run the ball. And, and it appears that we are about four minutes away from a Bobcat Cavalier showdown in the Cotton Bowl. From what I've heard, I don't think that depending on either of these teams ever wins, they're not going to be heading home. They're just going to go right from... New Mexico here and go right to right to the Cotton Bowl Stadium and get ready for uh, next week. And that's going to be a first down completion for Michael Rocco. Which again, this is a really cool time the teams get to bond. Oh, Perry. And now that wasn't Perry. It was number 25 who got the inside end up. That was uh, Kevin Parks. But yeah, I mean, these teams, they get to bond. They get to come all the way here. They've had a, a really fun week of vacation in New Mexico. Did a lot of charitable stuff. Did some cool things. And now they get to travel to the Cotton Bowl Stadium. Virginia does for winning. Uh, they'll probably stop along the way, see some sights, and get there, practice, do some more things. We know that the, the Ticket City Bowl Committee has some great events set up for both Ohio and Virginia. Then you win that game, you go to Hawaii. And you actually have a week off before the NIT Championships. So the team will get to enjoy two weeks in Hawaii. That's going to be a first down. We have a flag on the play. Holding against Virginia, so that'll take the first down away. But what's better? Going to one bowl game, having one week of vacation, waiting a month to play a team? Or going to a bowl game, having the week of vacation, winning, getting to do something else for a week, win again, have two-week trip in Hawaii? I mean, you tell me what system is better. I think the players are enjoying this play, frankly, and they're getting a chance to determine who the best is on the field of play. So that holding call will take away again the first down and will force Virginia to punt, and it will give new life to Louisville. One minute, 50 seconds to go, one timeout. They have 11 points to overcome. Bridgewater will go over the middle. Open receiver. Down to the 47. Here comes the no huddle. Bridgewater will spike the ball. And the guy's getting in his way. Oh my god, everyone's just bumping into each other down there. Be careful when I have any fights break out. The Gildan New Mexico Bowl. Bridgewater again in the gun. He will run it. Bridgewater has an opening. First down Louisville. That will stop the change. Here comes the no huddle. Or that will stop the clock while they move the chain. It won't stop the chain. And they're going to spike the ball. They figure, let's get the play call right. Let's not rush it. We got two touchdowns to make up. Five wide receivers. We've seen this many times today. Bridgewater. Wide open man standing at the 40. Down to the 34 yard line. Third and one. Can't spike it. You got to go. Batted down, batted down, and you see the Hulk Hogan from Virginia Cavalier, uh, Dorm Joseph, or Dom Joseph, 
who batted it down. Fourth and one. This is it for the Cardinals. Bridgewater's going to run it. First down, Louisville. The gutsy move for Bridgewater. Take the snap. Put the whole season on his shoulder to run it. Here comes the spike. That will kill the clock at a minute 14. This has been a masterful two-minute drill. You practice this every single day in practice. The two-minute drill. Bridgewater will run it. He can't shed the defender, so he's down to the 25-yard line and wasting a lot of time right now. They huddled up. On third down and nine, they huddle up. Less than a minute to go. Bridgewater. End zone. Incomplete. He overthrows his receiver once again. Oh, man. He's got to quit doing that. They're going to kick the field goal to try to make it an eight-point game. The kick is no good, and that will end the Cardinals' season. Yeah, the fans are going crazy. No good. The Cardinals' season will come to a close here today in New Mexico. It was a fun game, but the Virginia Cavaliers, they just came to the table a little bit stronger. 28-17. And we have a showdown, Virginia versus Ohio, round number two, the Ticket City Bowl. We have our second, second round matchup set of all the tournaments. We know LSU will play Georgia in the Liberty Bowl. And now we know in the Ticket City Bowl, it'll be West Virginia taking on Ohio. And one of these teams will try to march one step closer to the first ever NIT championship. That's going to do it here from Albuquerque, your 2011 Gildan New Mexico Bowl Champions, Virginia Cavaliers, 28 to 17. The Louisville Cardinals put up one heck of a fight. But you see from the play of the game, it was Rocco, Michael Rocco, just had an outstanding day. And when your quarterback is on fire, when your quarterback's throwing the heat, there's, there's nothing stopping you. Handshake down the field. A lot of respect from both teams, both sides of the ball. Yeah, Bridgewater, he played his heart out. He played his heart out. You can't deny that, Cardinal fans. And, of course, Michael Rocco, he'll be your player of the game. 8 for 12, 228 yards, 3 touchdowns. That's just clutch. They head off to the field. Let's see some final highlights. Let's recap this fun game. We can't forget about Perry. He did really well today. Here's a touchdown for him. Right over the middle. Look at the throw. Picture perfect throw. By Michael Rocco. I'm excited. Virginia and Ohio. That's going to be an exciting game. After especially seeing what these two teams did to their adversaries in the first couple of games. Smith with the grab. Again. Just seeing how good Rocco was. This was the play of the game. That was the one that really that saved the game for Virginia because momentum was really heading Louisville's way. And if not for that touchdown... Uh, Cardinals might have found a way to come all the way back. Let's take a look at those stats. That's a tradition here. Player stats, you already know Rocco. He did well. But again, on the other side, this guy did really well too. Teddy Bridgewater. 18-25, 201. One touchdown, no interceptions. Very clean game, both sides of the ball. Uh, he, he did really well running the ball. This guy, Victor Anderson, to put it bluntly, did awful. Five runs, negative 10 yards. On the other side of it, Perry Jones had a score, 15 runs, 91, 15 attempts, 91 yards. In the receiving game, spread the ball out pretty evenly. Did Rocco for Louisville, same thing. Uh, Smith was really the leading go-getter on the team, but other than that, everyone kind of did their part three catches each. Defensively, 
Uh, you see the numbers there. There's your top guys. And then on the Virginia side, here you see the numbers. Team stats. Cardinals. More first downs, but total offense. Virginia. Got them there. Passing yards, Virginia got them better in the third down efficiency. Uh, both teams did good in the red zone. But you see the one field goal there for Louisville. They didn't have to kick that. Game would have been a lot closer. And total yards got them there. So we can say, let's take a look at the brackets. We already know who's going where, but let's just take a look and and uh, put a picture with the with the talking head. There you see the NIT starting to take shape. Ohio and Virginia. They have moved on. They're the first second round game set. They joined Georgia Tech in the second round. Tulsa and Rutgers will battle out tomorrow. There you go. It'll be Saturday, Christmas Eve night, December 24th at 8 on the U. Ohio versus Virginia in the Ticket City Bowl. That's next weekend.